perfect 6 and 0. Exciting times going into the bye week. Yeah, they they need the bye week, get some guys healthy, but uh they they've they still haven't played a complete game. They haven't. They're and right. and they're 6 and 0, so that's not a bad place to be. Yeah, it'll give them plenty of work to do. Yeah. Over the bye week, but the results you can't argue with. The NFL's only undefeated team for a while now, but 3 weeks. They keep it going. This is the Eagle Eye podcast presented by Nissan. He's Ruben Frank, I'm Dave Zangaro. What's our record? We like 4 and 2. I'm 6 and 0. Oh, you're talking about your predictions. No, I just mean just me. Gen- yeah. general. Performance? Yeah. yeah. Big confidence. Yeah. Not you? I'm, I feel like I'm about like 4-1-1. One one. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, somewhere in there. This is a big win for the Eagles. And look, th- there were moments in this game where you didn't feel great about it. Uh, they let the Cowboys come back, and there were some, you know, on the edge of your seat moments in this game. But again, they hold on, and they win, which is important that's all that really matters you know <laughs> yeah and this is a team that's shown i mean nothing's really come easy for them i mean i guess the vikings game um, well it comes easy in the second quarter <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing but uh th- this team is really good at finding ways to win when and and with dealing with adversity whether it's blowing a 14 point lead or <laughs> uh being down 14 nothing and they've done both of those they've done kind of every possible way of losing control of a game and then getting it back at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a really dangerous way to go about your business, but they've made it work. Um, They've shown a lot of, um, you know, just a lot of character in finding ways at the end of the game. They've had some long drives when things are not going well and the other team has momentum. Uh, Detroit, uh, you know, was was similar. Um, Jacksonville, I mean, there's been games where they've been able to, you know, kind of find a way when nothing is going right. Injuries are are going on, all kind of chaos around them, and and they found ways to do what they have to do at the end of the game and and get a win out of it. I'm not sure how, but they've done it. And that's often a sign of a good team is things don't always go your way, and you figure it out. And it might not always look pretty, but you find a way to win. Uh, they they probably should have blown this team out. It looked like they were going to. They let them back in the game. Not great. It gives you some stuff to, you know, if you're the coaches, to look back on and figure out why that happened. There are some things that didn't do great, but that's a huge win. And it's it's against a team you need to beat. You have to beat the Cowboys. This division is crazy right now. Yeah, it is. And, I mean, if they lost this game, you're tied for second with the Giants. And, you know, you're a game and a tiebreaker behind the Cowboys, and you've lost now – eight of your last 10 mm-hmm. against your biggest rival. Um, you know, when we talk about that calmness that they show in those situations, I think it's just a reflection of the quarterback who's a 24 year old kid, but never shows any, any sign of anything bothering him or getting to him. He's just got this, this calmness about him, no matter what, no matter how chaotic things are around him, lanes out, whoever it is, whether it's Mulata or lane, uh, you got guys, you know, Usually Sua is in the middle of everything in these situations. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he just I – th- I think they take after him because he never shows any sign of panic mm-hmm. or uh, worry or concern. It's just, hey, let's just go play. And, um, you know, when you have a quarterback who has that aura about him of calmness, um, good things happen. Yeah. I, I just want to – before we get into the football part of it, that place was electric tonight. Yeah. I mean, it, it made a difference. Yeah, I'm sure it did. I mean, we, you know, just doing the pregame show out in the Headhouse Plaza, or I, I think it's now the Pepsi Plaza. I mean, it was, we had Benny Logan on as a guest mm-hmm. and, and he, he stood up and said, now I know you guys are on your 12th drinks by now. Yeah. Um, Conservative estimate there. You know, it was about 7.30. So yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I got down here really early. Um, I figured I'd beat the traffic. And there was no beating the traffic. There was there. no... Uh, the security guy outside said eight o'clock. People were mm-hmm. people were coming. Yeah, in. and whenever I get, I can always tell pretty early what the crowd is going to be like driving in. And today I was like, oh, this is going to be nuts. And you figured it was going to be like that. Sunday night football against the Cowboys. Everyone in the city's already buzzing because of the Phillies. Right. I wonder how many of those people at the link tonight were at one of the games, one of the Phillies games at home this yeah. weekend. There was just a euphoria kind of. I mean, this is before the game. It mm-hmm. was just kind of a. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know how else to say it. Just AJ Brown was like, 
It's just a regular season game. Yeah, it was uh, it was something else. I mean, I was here. I was across the street, but we heard it. It's funny. When there's a touchdown, we hear the fireworks before we mm -hmm. see the, the touchdown delay, yeah. uh, on TV. So, we, you know, it's like it's like third and eight, and you hear the fireworks. Oh, I guess they, <laughs> I guess they convert it. <laughs> it's the worst place to watch a game, right? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it was. And, and I think I feel like the whole city is just so into all this right now. Like, you, you can go to whether you're Wawa or Giant or or Coles, I mean, people are just, everyone's wearing Eagles jerseys, Phillies jerseys. The city's buzzing. Everyone wants to talk to you about, you know, who, you know, what do you think of the Phillies bullpen? What do you think of Jalen? And it's it's uh, it's really unusual to have two teams. It's unusual to have one team doing what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but you and I were both on the field before the game. Yeah. It, if, was, it felt like a playoff game. It really did. Yeah, I mean, Miles was, Sanders said it. He was like, he was happy, but he, he almost got there late today because the traffic was so crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And we were doing, I was about to do my my pregame show hit, and uh, you were standing right there. And all of a sudden, Joel and Bede walks by. Yeah, like, everyone goes nuts. Shady was down there. Shady was there. And then, uh, and I mean, and then Joe Biden's there. <laughs> and like, yeah, it was Joe just, Biden, Meek Mill is running around yeah. performing before the game. Meek Mill had a larger security contingent than Joe Biden. <laughs> he, he really did but yeah it was it kind of had that it had that feel of like oh something special is happening yeah, yeah no doubt about it yeah um yeah. normally it's like you know it's a good crowd all the time but yeah. it felt like it made a difference yeah in this game yeah it was pretty wild it was it was a lot of fun miles was joking he's like we appreciate it but when we're on offense let's just <laughs> make sure we're quiet there yeah. were a few dallas sucks chance when the Eagles were on offense, you could see Miles and a few of the guys. Like, All right, I think I think Nick was leading them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, um, yeah. Overall, it's a huge win. They go into the bye week, and you feel good about going in the bye week. Obviously, six and zero, top of the division, top of the conference, top of the NFL. But it's in a way, it's like the perfect storm for the Nick Sirianni Eagles because they have a perfect record, but they've been far from perfect. Yeah, and it's I, I kind of view that as a good thing. Yep in a way because they're winning games and there's still room for growth still a lot of room for improvement i mean if you're playing a perfect game and you're narrowly winning these in a way that's more troublesome the fact that they haven't put it together yet you think like man they're just scratching the surface of what this team can be yeah i think that's definitely true and i think that really struck struck me at the arizona game i thought the cards going back to last week played as well as they could play mm -hmm. They played as well as they could play. The Eagles did not play well in any phase, and they still won the game. There was something – I mean, Arizona was really fired up for that game and prepared and played hard. Um, it was probably the best game they've played all year, and, and the Eagles still went in there on the road and won. Uh, so, yeah, and there's, there is a lot to work on. But, I mean, I'd rather have a lot to work on and be 6-0 and than 2-4. and four. Yeah. Um, if you can, you can learn from wins, yeah, better than learning from losses. Yeah, and knowing this team – they will not go into this two week period thinking we're six and zero. We don't have. I mean, they're they're hungry, but they, mm -hmm. you know, they know that they have to get better and more consistent and um, finish teams off when they have them on the ropes is mm -hmm. the biggest thing. Yeah. All right. You want to talk about that drive? Yeah. Not the, not technically the last drive of the game, but um, it, gosh, it feels like the Eagles have one of these drives in the sec late in the second half in every win right yeah. I mean, and this one no different seven minutes and 37 seconds 13 plays 75 yards the first Excuse 11 me. plays of that drive were runs the last two no there was that short pass to miles they called it a pass okay um yeah it was on it was on first and ten after the uh did after, they call it a pass they called it a pass but yeah still I mean, same idea yeah mostly runs yeah and it's all the different backs mm -hmm. and and jalen and jalen and then the last two passes, beautiful. I mean, that's – to have that in your back pocket as an offense, that when you just got – you just need it, you have the horses up front to get it done. And this is without your best player, arguably, in Lane Johnson. Yeah. And, and Dickerson, Dickerson was out for a little point. while. Yeah, he was in and out. Yeah. To be able to do that, it's special. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. That drive was a thing of beauty. And they, they, they do it every week. They, I think the way that Shane uses the running backs really helps because, you know, he's mixing the matches throughout, mixing and matching throughout the game 
mainly Gainwell and 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 Miles, but uh, Boston had a few. I think he finished with seven or eight carries. And so you get to that drive at the end, and the O line is like, we can't wait to run block, mm -hmm. and the backs are fresh. I think Miles ran really hard. His numbers weren't gaudy. But he ran really hard, and I mean, he started that last drive off with a 13-yard run. It really kind of set the tone. Um, and I love the way Shane's using Gainwell because he, he got off to a bad start this year, and he hasn't caught the ball like he did last year. Yeah, but he's a good runner. Yeah, had five for 25 in this game, and I think he was three for 20 last week. And they were all in the last drive again. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think he's a tough matchup, fresh at the end of games, fresh legs, and then you hit him with Miles on the next play. Um, that drive was, it was a masterpiece. And, um, you know, the, it, I mean, the Cowboys had so much was working against the Eagles at that point, you know, they'd gone three and out, I think three and out, three and out on the first two drives or maybe one first down on one of them, but of the second half lane was out. Dickerson was hobbled and the Cowboys had just scored 14 straight points and it was 2017. And if they don't put that drive together, yeah, those two drives in the, the third quarter, nine plays, total of six yards. Six yards, yeah, and a, a penalty. I think they got a first down on a penalty. But yeah. um, their backs were to the wall, and if they don't get a few first downs there, um, probably if they I, – I felt like if they got a field goal, they'd lose the game. I really felt that way because, I mean, Dallas had found something on offense, certainly, and the Eagles looked gassed on defense. Um which they shouldn't be, but they, you know, they just, um, they just hammered. How many third downs did they, they converted? They were three for three on that drive on third down, um, third and four, third and four, third and one. And Hertz, I mean, we've said this before, but on those keepers, I don't know how you stop them. You don't. You watch his legs. It's amazing watching his legs on those because. I, and I mean, obviously the offensive line gets the initial push. Sure. But then having a quarterback that squats 600 pounds. Yeah. I mean. And like Dallas, you can see the frustration. Dallas is starting to dive over, which that's not doing. Like, no. what the heck's that going to do? Yeah, he just gets low and keeps turning those yeah. legs. Um, what is he? I think fourteen for sixteen yeah. now on third and one yeah. or fourth and one. I, He's unstoppable. He is unstoppable. And one of those, and one of those wasn't a sneak. One of them was a scramble. It was. A, it wasn't even a scramble. It was like a design, but it wasn't a. It wasn't a sneak. Yeah. Yeah. That. Um... You know, they they didn't run the ball super consistently all day, but on that drive, they they found what was missing. Yeah, and it seems like there's a moment like that in all these games where yeah. it's like we need this. We just got to run the ball, and we got to let the guys up front eat. And they a lot of was unreal on that drive. Yeah, I talked to him about the drive after the game, and I was like, "What's that like for you in that drive?" He's like, "Exhausting," but he said, "But you can tell it wears the defense down, and that kind of gives you." The, the extra little fuel to, to push through. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It was something, it was something. And it's not even surprising anymore. You just feel like, you know, they're going to, they're going to find a way they've done it all year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, seven minutes and 37 seconds on that drive. And they had their drive in the, uh, in the second quarter was seven thirty six. Hmm. So to have two of those drives, in one game, both 75 yards. One was 15 plays, 75 yards. One was 13 plays. The Eagles lead the NFL. Well, I'll have to update this tomorrow, but coming into today, and I don't think this would have changed, they led the NFL in 75-yard touchdown drives, long touchdown drives. They haven't had good field position, so mm -hmm. they've had to drive, yeah. um, you know, put together long drives. Now the, the turnovers will They help did them. have some today. Yeah. Sure, with the turnovers. I mean, in the first five games. Yeah. Um, they didn't have a – yeah, but uh, – uh, yeah, it was. I, and, and you, you touched on this, but I love just run, 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 and then just chuck it to. That was a great play that uh, the AJ and mm -hmm. Dallas just they they can't tackle him. I mean, they yeah. just they just waving at him, and that's not how you tackle AJ Brown. You can't, it won't work. And then the, the touchdown was just a beautiful, beautiful thing, um, from from Jalen. So, uh, and that was the ball game. That was it. That was it. Yeah, yeah. that was it. And. Dallas did some wacky stuff time management wise. Yeah. Yeah. McCarthy. Yeah. McCarthy being McCarthy. You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we've got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that'll make your heartbeat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at nissanusa.com today.
Let's talk about the defense a little bit. Let's start with the secondary because it's it's amazing to watch the secondary play. I still I I still can't believe they got James Bradbury room. He's incredible. He's about to get paid. It's not going to be here. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably not. I don't know how they would do it, but it's funny. It, the second time in a row, we walk up to Slay and he goes, we got to talk about how they let him out the building. <laughs> <laughs> he is a trip. I mean, yeah. he is so funny. Um, but yeah, Bradbury, I mean, he didn't have a pick today, but I mean, he had the, the one, the one, one, one of his four um, <laughs> KDs that, that, you know, caused a pick. Um, they had 12 pass knockdowns. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like CJ GJ had two, Slay had two, Bradbury had four. Hargrave knocked one down, got his big mm-hmm. mitts up there. Epsi um, probably could have had a pick, yeah. uh, Kazir and, and Edwards. But, yeah, they were just all over the ball. And, you know, Cooper Rush made a couple plays. He's got a noodle arm. Yeah, he does. He does. Uh, but they've been able to work around it, you know, with the running mm-hmm. game and the short yeah. passing game. Um, Anyone who, who was talking about some BS – quarterback controversy yeah. and put that to bed i was thinking about that today like have you watched this guy play yeah. um he hadn't thrown a pick all year he at- credit the eagles though because th- that was that's that was their mo coming in this game was yeah. don't turn the football over on offense let a very good defense do its job lean on the running attack eagles did it the eagles forced them into situations where he turned the ball over and some of it was pressure you know that they didn't end up with a sack in this game but i thought their pressure was pretty good yeah i would agree you know, it's interesting that uh, in NFL history, only 16 teams have had two or fewer turnovers after five weeks. Okay. Two of them are the Eagles and the Cowboys this year. Oh, wow. So they both teams came into this game as two of the all-time great teams not turning the ball over. And that's why I felt like if you just get one takeaway and score <laughs> off it, you're going to have a really good chance to win. So they got three of them three. Yeah. Um, and scored off two of them. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, I – I was – look, Cooper Rush, I mean, he's tough. He played tough, and he made some throws at the end. Um, but, yeah, anybody who thinks he should be starting over deck, you're out of your mind. Well, they don't. those people don't exist anymore. No, not after this. Not after this one. Um, but, yeah, it, it's – it's the amazing thing about the secondary, too, is Bradbury last year wasn't here. CJ, GJ wasn't mm-hmm. here. Uh, Epps wasn't starting. I think he started three games maybe last year. Um, and they've all just kind of meshed really well together. Yeah, and Avante was back this week. Yeah. But, I mean, even when Josiah Scott was in there, they kept humming. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I give I give Chauncey Gardner-Johnson so much credit for coming back in that game. Yeah, comes back in the game, and has a huge pick. And a huge pick where he needed his hands, his hands. under the ball. Yeah. I mean, you saw how much pain he was in. Yeah. After after he got hurt, I mean, he was like, I'm thinking he's not – He's, we're not going to see him till after the bye week. That's what I thought. If, if if we're lucky, if we're lucky, I mean, I thought it maybe broke his hand. Sure. I mean, he showed some. There was a lot of guys that don't come back in that game. Mm-hmm. I think he saw Kayvon out there, and he's like, "I got to get back in this game." Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, and that's that's one. That's the thing. They don't have any depth, right? At safety, it opens your eyes a little bit. Like they have depth at some other positions. You don't want to lose Lane Johnson. He's your best player, but. They're you're, functional, you're functional you yeah. know, man, a safety. They had Kayvon and the only other safety they had up was Andre Sachere, who I might I almost would rather see out there. I'd rather see Reed at Blankenship out there. He was inactive. He was inactive, but I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, we both thought I don't I didn't have Kayvon on my 53. I was surprised they kept him. I had him. I think. Did you have him? Yeah. I, I just don't think he's very good. And yeah. I mean, the speed is a problem. We saw it today. I mean, I don't think Gardner Johnson wasn't on either of those touchdown drives, right? I think he missed both of them. Well, yeah. Or yeah. yeah. Um, Did he get hurt at the beginning of the the first one? I'll, I'll have to check that. Yeah. But um, he's playing great. He's playing. He's great. figuring it out. He wasn't even here for training. Yeah. Camp. I feel like uh, I wrote that story at the right time. <laughs> yeah. Check out Dave's story on, yeah. on Trossy. He's a fun guy. He's, you know, I, his trash talking has overshadowed this play, which is a shame. And, and some of it, hey, that's on him because he's been such a trash talker. Yeah. In his career, he for you know he he trash talked his way and again a guy to punch him in the face and it became this big viral clip. But he was really good in New Orleans and um, 
for his sake, he's starting to show he can do that at a different position. And his play is now outshining the other stuff. Yeah. And the other stuff is still fun. Like he's still an interesting dude. He's got a lot of swagger to him. Um, he's, he never shuts up. He's, he's always going and his teammates love that about him. He's a fun guy. He, he brings some energy. And he's got three picks in the last two games. Yeah. This team's got some great, great. I ran into him after the game uh, in the tunnel. He, he, he said he's all right. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say this team has some really great personalities. When you look at Slay, mm-hmm. um, Gardner Johnson, um, AJ Brown, BG um, still, BG still, uh, you know, Hassan Reddick. I mean, they, yeah. they've got some real swagger yeah. uh, on this team. Guys who aren't uh, afraid to be six and zero and aren't surprised at being six and zero and and want that, you know, they, they want to, uh, be front runners. I mean, it's it's a fun group. Miles was joking about his all star team comment. He's like, I guess I was not not totally. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna imagine if if this team does go to the Super Bowl? There's gonna be some podium, some serious podium action for for AJ Brown. Yeah, for for Chauncey Garner Johnson. I guess Reddick is former Arizona. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I like that you're you got Super Bowl storylines on the brain. Yeah, I got I'm working on a budget, but uh it's a fun team. It's a fun team to watch and and uh but they they put in the work and they're and they're so focused. And I, I think that's that's really what helps them deal with adversity is yeah. they really do have that one snap at a time yeah. mentality. And look, defensively it wasn't perfect. No. We saw leaky at times, yeah. some missed tackles at times. Yeah. You, you gotta clean that up. Made Ezekiel look like it was 2014 again. <laughs> a little bit. Goodness. There were some some plays where you're like, all right, that needs to get cleaned up. This run defense is not good. They need to get Jordan Davis playing in the four man front because it they're really it's tipping because he's only in that bare front over center. Right. And that's gotta be the next evolution. Yeah. Yeah. He's really good, by the way. He, he's very good. He made some plays today where you're like, oh yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because it's not even like him making the tackles. Other guys are cleaning up, but he's yeah, he, uh, he's he's doing his job for sure. And we also saw them. I I, I really liked at one point because last week they kind of went like hockey line shift right. and they put the whole second team line out there, and it right. was rough. They kind of had like a quasi second team line where you had Davis out there next to Toy Pelotu and Milton, but also. Reddick on so like it, they they mixed and matched a little bit because I think if you put your second team defense the whole second team out there you're gonna get exposed a little bit yeah no I, I would agree with that um defense I mean the, the run defense they, they allowed 5.2 yards a carry which is just too high um I I, I think I, I don't feel like Dallas could really beat them running the ball mm-hmm um, so I thought they'd have to make some throws, which they, they did in the second half. But mm-hmm. the bottom line is points. I mean, you look at the last five games, uh, the defense has given up 7, 8, 13, 7, and 17, and 17. 7, 8, 13, because Jacksonville had the pick six, yeah. and uh, 17 and 17. In five straight games, they've been 17 or fewer. And, yeah. And you know what's really – what this defense is really doing well, they're not giving up big plays. Yeah, uh, which is what – that's how they designed it. They allowed five. Listen to this. They allowed five plays of 25 yards or more in Detroit. And they've only allowed five since. And they've only allowed three plays of 30 yards or more all year. And one was on the first play of the year, <laughs> um, yeah. that running play. But um, I, I, I think, and I think that's a big part of Gannon's philosophy is if, if we give up four, five, six yards, you know, that's fine, but we're going to keep them out of the end zone. And they are pretty good in the red zone. They do force it. They've already got more turnover takeaways than all last year in six games. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, so um, I think it's a, it's, it's a sound deal. I'm not sure that would work against everybody, but um, he does, you know, he does adjust uh, and does, does make changes, but um, I feel pretty good about where the defense is. And there's, there's some, hey, we got players, there's some flaws, but, um, they're doing a lot of things really well, and I, I think, I think what you said is accurate. I mean, I want to see sacks, but they really did pressure well. Yeah, it didn't bother me they didn't sack them. Yeah, it didn't bother me either. Um, BG, they had, they had some. They BG on that one killed him. I was surprised they didn't 
call it the way they've been calling late hits. Cooper Rush ain't getting that call. Yeah, that's probably true. If it was Dak, he might have gotten it. Yeah. Um, Reddick had some good pressure. Yeah, he did. One. Yeah, Reddick had some good pressures. Uh, missed some, you know, still too many missed tackles. Yeah, that was the one thing. I mean, that if you have to nitpick about the defense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, missed tackles and Kayvon. They're keeping teams out of the end zone for the most part. And 17 point, you give up 17 with this offense, you're going to win almost every game, maybe every game. Yeah. Yeah. Every game so far. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else on defense you want to highlight? Um, I want to No, Kaiser White. Yeah. I thought he had a real good game. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, maybe, maybe one of his best games. Yeah. Really active. Yeah. Um, Every, I mean, every everybody's contributing on this defense, and there's there's when they're healthy, when they're all Patrick out. Patrick Johnson, yeah, he's starting to yeah. take, to make some moves. Yeah, he's showing up. Um, it, it's just you know, it's just great to see. Like you think about this secondary last year, and I liked Rodney McLeod, and I'm on the record of saying I thought they should have kept him, but um, that's when we thought it was between him or Anthony Harris. Right now, but you think about, I mean, Anthony Harris, Rodney McLeod, and Stephen Nelson were three quarters of their starting secondary. Yeah. They overhauled the secondary. They were I, fine. They were okay, but yeah. you weren't going to be 6-0 and with them. No. You probably lose this game with them. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a really good sign of a, of a GM that really wants to win when you go 9-8 and eight and you say, we're not good enough and we have to make some changes yeah. and they did, they made a lot of them. Yeah. They're every, all paying off. Every, yeah, the every single the thing, one. They're all, they're all doing it. Um, one thing that I I'm, I forgot to mention when we we're on the offensive side. It's too late. We already finished. No, that. I have it. Uh, they found a really interesting way to neutralize Micah Parsons. Let him run free and read him. Yeah. It's it's really smart. And we, we've seen the Eagles did it a few years ago with Von Miller when he was on his tear. Let him come unblocked, read him, and put him in a tough situation. And they did that twice. And Huge moments, yeah, and paid off both times. And you need a quarterback that's really smart mm-hmm. and really locked into the game plan. Yeah. And uh, you can see, I mean, he's he's hurt, and he's still just you can see how good he is. He's a great. Player. I mean, even in coverage, you know, he's yeah. he's good in coverage. Although Jack Stoll broke free. What um, was? How did that happen? Yeah, Jack Stoll, eighty nine, best eleven there, better player. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was a little surprised Goddard didn't didn't have more catches, but they you know they I mean, I think, had that one. It was it got tipped. Yeah, he dropped it, but he still probably should have. Yeah, had probably. It. But yeah, it's good to see Jack Stoll, who had I think twenty six career yards before that play and twenty two on that play. Yeah. Um, that was something. Yeah, yeah. In the press box, they announced it as Goddard, just because they assumed it was Goddard. So you have three tight ends that have a twenty yard catch now. That's right. Goddard has a few. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, the other two have one each. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like one of the longest catches of the season. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I, th- I, th- I, I think they really look. They had a couple sacks. What did they end up with? Two sacks on Jalen three. Um, um four, uh, four sacks. Okay. okay. Um, one of them on that that zero blitz. Like, yeah. What are we like? What are we doing? Everyone knows there's a blitz coming. Yeah. He's got to have an answer. Yeah. There's got to be an answer there. He's got to know what it is. He's got to see the blitz coming. Right. Whole stadium sees the blitz coming. Yeah, that was bad. Um, you can see why they were four and one. I mean, they really get after the quarterback. They're yeah. they're they've got they got a bunch of guys that can rush the passer, and you're out there with Jalen saved Lane Johnson's sackless streak. Demarcus Lawrence beat Lane. Oh yeah, had a had a lane to Jalen, and Jalen shook him. Yeah, yeah, he did. He's really good. I don't know how that happened, um, but. Uh, I mean, his his career was kind of on a downward arc. Yeah, I everyone thought, a lot of people thought he was done. Yeah, he's playing really well. Yeah, so you can see. I mean, look, th- this is I, I think this is Jalen's. I mean, his numbers weren't, you know, didn't jump out of, off the page. Mm-hmm. Did have two touchdowns, and once again, no to to play a game like this against that defense mm-hmm. and not turn the ball over. Yeah, you remember how much fumbling was a problem early in his career? Yeah, um, his ball security is unreal. I mean, he's thrown. Gosh, he's thrown 184 passes this year and has two interceptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just doesn't throw interceptions. He's got like 22 straight games 
where he's thrown one or fewer interceptions, something, something like that. It's, he's just so solid right now. And uh, it was good to see him throw the ball into the end zone. I, it doesn't really matter yeah. he, as long as you score, but it'll shut the haters up for, uh, you know, a couple of weeks. I saw so many graphics um, saying that, you know, coming into this game, Cooper Rush and Jalen Hurts had the same number of passing touchdowns. Like that matters. Like, like all of his yeah. rushing touchdowns don't matter. Yeah. Six of them. So stupid. Yeah. Well, oh, it, it, you know, I give Jalen credit though, because early in that game, things weren't working that that offense looked stale he was missing a little bit his he was just off that first drive it was all passes and there's been a few of those games where he's had two games where he's 0 for 5 and you wonder if like oh maybe this isn't going to be great and then he he figures it out his were you did you have a chance to get to his presser i know i was in the locker locker room man he i I know you will listen to it i mean he is his, his wisdom and maturity are off the charts and um it's just it's so, I don't know. It's just so, it's like, you see why he's such a leader when you listen to him talk. Yeah. He's just, he's got all the answers. He's got all those aphor, aphorisms. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got all these little sayings and uh, and he lives by them. The Sabinisms. Yeah, Sabinisms. <laughs> he's an interesting dude. He's playing really, really well. He's won nine straight regular season starts that ties the franchise record. Yeah. Set by Norm Van Brocklin and matched by Donovan in 03. And guy in Indy in mm-hmm. 17. Yeah. You know how I feel about QB wins. Uh, yeah. It's they're better than losses. Well, <laughs> I don't, to me, a QB wins barely even a stat, but it's fine. Well, I, I'll tell you what, since this team was, was uh, three and six, what are they? They were three and six and then nine and seven. So they're six and one. Forget the other Dallas game. Six and one and six and another. 12 and one in their last 13 meaningful games yeah so that's a that's a pretty good stat whoever gets the credit for it yeah the team does and and <laughs> you know and i mean we don't talk about nick enough uh, maybe we could talk more about him in the next pod but um he had this team so focused for this game and and not worried about the hype and the national tv and the trash talking and you know they were ready and i i give the eagles credit because dallas let their emotions get to them yeah, in this game. They did. I mean, Michael Parsons took a really stupid penalty. You just penalty. can't take. Yeah, We saw Jason Kelsey get speared by, I think it was Oso Odigizua it was. at the end of the game. And, yeah, the Eagles wanted to kill him. And you could tell everyone wanted to leave the bench, and no one did. Yeah. You know? And even after the game, Kelsey's like, you know, they care. They're, you know, they, they did not let their emotions – get to them they didn't retaliate a ton yeah it's a it's a sign of a mature team that that's led by good leaders and good coaching yeah yeah they're very disciplined Mm -hmm. on the field off the field negativity corner yeah let's do it special teams awful Oof. michael clay's got to go they're gonna end up they're gonna end up losing the game because of this yeah i mean you add the what was a 64 yard kick return at the end of the half i mean Eagles are up 20 nothing, and you know they kept him out of the end zone. That's great, but it should have been 20 nothing. Yeah. 60, and he's a good he's Turpin's a good returner. Yeah, 63 good. on the kick return. And they, they got a break on the long punt return. Yeah. Uh with a penalty. But I think they ended up scoring on that drive. But um every week it's something. Last week it was the, you just get the feeling it's like something's gonna break they, down. They gave up a fake punt. From their from the twenty eight yard line on a fourth and four, yeah. there's been a, a blocked field goal. There's been um, a penalty on a on a field goal attempt that gave a team a fresh set of downs. Um, and there have been some good plays. Sure, like, you know Jake Elliott hits a fifty yarder in his first game back. Great. Aaron Sipos was okay. He was okay. Yeah, it was okay. There was one punt. I was like, all right, you need a little more on that, but. It was all right. And they cover punts well. <clears throat> Covey had a fourteen yard return. I thought it was fifteen. 14. It's a bad spot. <laughs> the Cow- uh, Eagles got a break on that spot, by the way. On that, Mike McCarthy's got to challenge that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what he was thinking. He's not not the smartest guy, <laughs> I no. think. Um, but then then uh, Ga- the Cowboys got a break on the no call on that block in the back. On Bradbury. Yeah. What the heck? What, if that's not a block in the back, it was a block in the back. Yeah. Like, well, if that's not one, what the heck is? Yeah. yeah Textbook. Those, those, uh, 
yeah, those offset each other. But, um, but yeah, special teams is, um, it's a train wreck. I mean, um, and look, I think the kicking game is separate. I mean, that's kind of, yeah. I mean, it's, special it's teams part is of it. weird because it's all these different yeah. things, uh, but they're just not good at it. And they're good at kicking the football through the goalposts with two different guys. <laughs> Uh, but everything else, which is, is like, look, we know that's a there's they got a block on that, and everyone's doing their job. But they did have one block. Yeah, they did. Um, I look. I said at the end of last year, I didn't think Michael Clay was the guy to fix it, and I still don't. Um, he's uh, he's not going anywhere, but I just don't. Yeah, I mean, you, you just you just you worry about it because they they're winning these games and. For the most part, they're really out playing the other teams, and you don't notice it as much. But man, if you're in a tight game, pl- a play like that could sure could really screw you. Yeah, yeah. It's if they don't get it cleaned up, it's going to come back and bite them. Yeah. yeah anything else? No. I, I one other thing. Um, <laughs> no, but yes, I have. I have to. Say. I just want to let everyone know I was uh, on the post game set um, with Jaws and Barrett and uh, Michael Barkan. And Dave um, messaged me on Slack and said, hey, did you lose your keys? I, I, I don't know. Maybe my reputation precedes me. What made you think it could possibly be me? <laughs> well, they, they kept making an announcement um, over the the speaker, like in the press box, that someone left their keys in like the cafeteria section. Yeah. And they said it was a Honda. And I think you have a Honda. I have right? a Toyota. You have a Toyota. Okay. I thought you had a Honda. So when they said I had that, I had a Civic in college. Okay, the engine um, blew up on turnpike. Anyway, so when when, when I thought I thought it was I I thought it was a Honda. So when they said that, I was like, oh. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I got to message you because if it's your keys, I got to get them because yeah. you won't have time to get over there. Right, right. They were not my keys. I had my key, and I knew where my keys were. That's the amazing <laughs> thing. I said, I think they're in the top zipper compartment of my backpack, and they were. Good. I'm so, well. I'm glad. I hope. I hope whoever's car it was got their keys. I hope so. Well, yeah. if you see a Honda in the parking lot, you'll yeah. know who's who's it is. <laughs> All right. We good? Yeah. Joel Embiid's a giant. He's. I've never really, been that close to him. Yeah. Me too. Enormous. Yeah. He walked right behind our our location yeah. there. It was great seeing Shady too. He's a trip. Shady, yeah. He's so funny. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Please. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button and subscribe there as well. That's it. Big Eagles win. We'll talk to you soon. For Rube, I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan.